Hi, my name is Becky. And I'm Ed. And, we're and we Quicken are Quicken Farms. Farms. I'm a full-time farmer. I'm a part of the Hampshire County Board of Education. Uh, a meat cutter by trade for a while. And uh, I'm the brawns and the, the bad ideas of the outfit. So. Uh, I'm the self-proclaimed brains. Of course I am. Um, I'm a supreme marketing technician. No, I know how to use Facebook. <laughs> um, I'm basically the head gate opener and the support team. For when things go wrong, usually it's bring me some wrenches or a can of gas. <laughs> I really like uh, mythologies. It's something that I've, I've just always been really interested in. Um, whether it be, you know, an international version like, you know, Greek mythology or just local folklore kind of thing. Um, and I'm just, I'm a huge reader and I came across the word quicken and I just really liked it. It has Gaelic roots in it. And so that just appealed to the nerd in me. Um, and it just seemed really appropriate. We wanted to be something different from everybody and it meant to bring forth in life, like to quicken with life. And I thought that's exactly what farming is or what it should be. That's what it meant to us. So that's what we decided to go with. Uh, we had actually, uh, her family, well actually both our families are from the county and uh, Becky, uh, her grandma lives a couple miles down the road. And uh, when we first got together, 20, a long time ago uh we were living with her uh, mom and dad and uh we had actually rented a little trailer place off of her grandma and then uh we had big plans we were young and we were going to move to alaska um so we were packed up ready to go and uh, i was out on the motorcycle one day and we thought we had saw every piece of property from here to you know to pendleton county and uh just by chance just riding over and right over there in the corner was a real estate sign down in the weeds and the bushes and just you know it's like well we hadn't seen this one before so we end up calling it and it was just like uh it was some sort of divine intervention uh it was 40 acres we had no perception of what 40 acres was you know when we first looked we thought well it's at bottom you know well, that'd be great and uh it's a little and we know you know lots of wheeling and dealing with the bank we end up buying the place and uh come to find out that there was actually this was it was the, this farm was the original homestead of uh, a lot of her uh, her step grandma's people uh, the old house actually was in our driveway uh, that's where the old house site was there's a lot of history around uh, the post office was used to be right across the street and uh, when we were putting the uh, the, pen, the fence in for the gate there was actually a post that was set in old concrete and on top of it was HK. And that was what? My great granddad. Her great granddad's initials. And it was like, hmm, it's kind of just meant to be. So that's uh, that's how we end up staying here. And we just kind of set roots and we haven't left the continental US since. focus on raising hogs um, we we try to do everything we can start to finish from farrow to plate um, and basically what we do is we pasture base our hogs um, and then they're finished on feed that we grind try to keep everything we can local and then we cut and process everything that we grow and we offer that up to the public in cuts and artisanal sausages. Um, pigs are not herbivores, they're omnivores. So we we try to provide them with the best of both worlds that we can give them. Most of their time is spent out here on pasture um, and they forage, they get whatever they come across, whether Big that be, yeah, t yeah <laughs> they're, they're aerating the field as we speak. Um, but you know, they're getting their bugs and roots and acorn, you know, whatever it is they come across and then we do supplement them with feed. Um, and it's corn, just a simple corn soybean mix. We add their mineral pack to, and we like to add flavors to ours, um, whether that be cake mix or Kool-Aid, whatever. You know, you get tired of eating the same thing every day, so do they. Um, so they, they get both. So for us, it's, they just, they spend most of their time. They're like kids, you know, they go outside and they play all day and they come up and eat. That's pretty much how it goes. 
Well, originally when we first bought the place, uh, there was actually a gentleman that was renting it. And uh, we had actually, he gave us a calf for, uh, for rent. And then a calf turned into, we did some bartering with the neighbors, turned into goats. And then we enjoyed the goats and we got really big with the goats. And uh, then we, we liked to eat. So we started raising a few pigs. And uh, one thing led to another. We actually had gotten out of the pigs for a little while. Uh, had got really big in the goats. We put a feeding building in and all that. And uh, from then on out, we uh, there was an, uh, a couple from Cape and Bridge, uh, Kate and Pete Pacelli, who had reached out to us and they wanted to start a uh, whole animal butcher shop in Cape and Bridge. And they were looking for a swine producer and they heard that we had had some experience with pigs and uh, we were open to anything, you know, open up to ideas. And we, what, we had a meeting up right here in the corral. Yeah. Yeah, we met here at the corral. And next thing you know, it's like, well, we'd like to have, a, a, was it a pig every two weeks, they said? Yeah, We'd like to have one every two weeks, but we'd like them to be pasture-based. It's like, okay. So we didn't have much money at all to, to spare on this. So we went to FSA and said, hey, Dale, we need to borrow some money. Okay, what do you need? Well, we'd like to buy some growl panels, and this, that, and the other thing. Oh, and then we'd like to get three little gilts to start a pastured pig. And he pretty well laughed at us. You know, just like, what? So one thing led to another. Um, our first delivery to Pete was like a week before he opened. And he called us like two days later, said, uh, we need to change. Uh, can we get one every week? And one every week has gone from one to three. We've had some weeks as many as five a week. Uh, so it's just been, yeah, it's been a monster that's kind of grown out of control. And then during COVID, you know, there was this, you know, people were getting taken advantage of and, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't much groceries on the, the shelf. And we just thought, you know, we're very industrious people. Let's start processing our own pig. You know, we have the relationship with the butcher house. Uh, so we have our hogs slaughtered in Hagerstown, Maryland under federal inspection and then let's go ahead and process after quite the uh would you say the steep learning curve yeah. uh with rules and regulations uh we we fit into a niche pretty good a retail exempt so it's just i don't know i guess it's just a it's a growth thing you know it goes from one necessity to the next to the next no telling what tomorrow has has in mind but it's a uh, 90 miles uh one way is to Hagerstown, maryland we uh Generally, they uh, they process uh, they kill on Mondays. So Sunday night, I'll go up. We'll hook the stock trailer up. We back up. We'll select three, four, one, however many pigs we need that week. Uh, we load them up. Take them to Randall's on Monday. Uh, the boys up there will go ahead and they'll kill. They'll scald them, scrape them, split them in half. Uh, they'll get the inspection sticker on them. And then generally, we try to shoot for Tuesdays. Or Wednesdays, uh, we another thing out of necessity, we build ourselves a, a little refrigerated trailer. It runs off of a cool bot and uh, and a generator, and we hook that up on the other truck the next day or so. Then we head back down another 90 miles one way, and we'll pick the carcasses up, and then we'll stop in at Cape and Bridge at the farmer's daughter, and we'll drop off what they need, and then from there we'll come home, and then the next day uh, we'll go ahead and take the. Uh, that ours over to the uh, commercial kitchen and we'll start processing. Um, with everything that we have going on, generally processing isn't quite as fast as we'd like it to be, like a, a one day deal, but generally we, we cut everything and get it all prepped for sausage making the next day. And then the next day we'll spend uh, making the sausages, stuffing, wrapping, all that sort of thing. And then uh, we have a market on every Saturday. Um, rain, snow, sleet, or shine, we're out at at, uh, at top of the mountain in Romney, uh, just a couple hours a week, you know, two to, I think, 10 to two. Yeah. And uh, we're out there, and that's where we sell our wares to the public. Uh, we had started out, like I said, back in COVID, and uh, we've got quite the following. We have a lot of people that like our products, so, you know, we miss a few days. We took a small hiatus over Christmas and uh, just try to get things caught up here. But we're back at it tomorrow or back at it last week starting we we try to stay outside of the box like that's our thing is farming outside the box um and we really try to stay outside that box we have some standard cuts like butt roasts and regular pork chops um 
probably our number one cut though are our mega chops they're like a one pound pork chop they're super thick we work hard to put the fat on so we leave a little of that fat on you've got about a half inch fat that goes around it and then you're marbling on top of it um some folks that's a turn off most folks they snatch them right up it's, it's a it's probably the number one seller every week for our cuts this sausages. sausage is really where it's at for us right now we regularly rotate through 16 different flavors that we do um we also have some that are super seasonal like we do a ramp sausage we are not fortunate enough to have our own ramp pack so they have to be harvested by somebody that we trust we have to make sure that they're not completely depleting the patch because it's something we want to be able to do every year so they are super seasonal um and you only get as many as what the the patch will allow so we may have a single 25 pound batch of sausage or we may get three three batches out of it um we, we do like a christmas sausage which is it's probably my favorite to make because it involves a lot of fruit, fruit uh soaked in a lot of gin <laughs> for the flavor and for my happiness <laughs> in Christmas time. Um, just, we really get to express ourselves, play around with different things and always open to suggestions on it. And I think honestly that helps us with our sales. People like to have input. Um, they don't necessarily want to make decisions all the time. You know, I don't know about you, but I get tired of saying, what am I fixing for dinner today? But they're happy to come up with ideas for things and that gives us a little play with them, a little interaction, and we know we're headed the direction they want us to go. We're constantly growing, and if something doesn't work, we try something different, or like this year, we just picked up a, a really huge account for us. Um, Cape and Springs Resort has decided they want to partner with us for their breakfast sausage. It's literally a ton of breakfast sausage, yeah. so... <laughs> We did a little bit for them last year. We did what? Five? Four pounds of each. So, so 800 pounds. Okay, total. eight total. Um, and that was just like, oh my goodness, we have to hurry up and crank this out. So I really have no idea. I can't even begin to tell you how many pounds of sausage we do in I a year. I think generally, if, let's just say we kill three a week every week. Easily three a week. So there's 150 couple hogs a week or a, a year and that doesn't count like the roasters or like the orders we sell to hardy county yeah, schools or anything that we donate um, yeah because we, we try to keep up with the community when there's things going on you know fundraisers and things like that we try to donate to everything that we can don't have a lot of money to put at it but we have sausage, sausage. samplers <laughs> and, and that sort of thing but to go back to the sausages it was just i think that's our the funnest part of it all in it it, it is, yeah. That's like what was it? We, last year we did. Uh, we brought the. We came in with the chili dog, uh, and it was just an aspiration from a West Virginia chili dog. Uh, and then you did a Bloody Mary. We did a Bloody Mary sausage. That was really labor intensive, but it was kicking, man. It was, it was delicious. Great. Um, and uh, right now we have a, a kabasi. We we're playing with a, a kabasi and the. The label on this says the jury's still out. So we'd like, yeah, we'd like we to just, hear what the folks have to say about it. Yeah. But we, we want the input. Yeah, we have somebody we have some people that are asking us to experiment with a curry, you know, an Indian inspired. Like, okay, we'll we'll try. That might be the next one that comes. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> I'm president of the school board, so we're we're really we work a lot with the kids, and then and uh, just everything to do with the the 4-H, uh, the FFA club, and it's not just the community as Hampshire County. We we really reached out to like we've got a lot of great kids in Hardy County and Grant County, uh, some awesome awesome young folks in in uh, Mineral, and uh, yeah, we just I don't know we try to help out where we can. We don't like to be the limelight, but we definitely like to be involved and help. I think there you make more of a difference like that. But if I could say on the on the advice to getting started, be prepared for bad things to happen. You know, you're gonna look at the checkbook and think, oh no, we're overdrawn, you know, or you go to pay for a feed bill. You know, it, it's it's not all roses. 
and there's gonna be times that you're gonna be lucky to be able to afford peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. It, it, and it happens all the time. It's like, you know, to be completely honest, we're just about ready to step into what we call the dark months. You know, February and March is, is hard for everybody. And, you know, and w our market somewhat depends on the, not a, I guess a looser uh, amount of money, you know, not disposable money, but, you know, people would like to pay, you know, they like a premium, so they'll pay, they'll buy our stuff. But uh, sometimes that dries up. But then also keep in, informed of your market. It's like, I drive her crazy every time we go to the grocery store. I'm over in the pork aisle and I'm looking at everything. And it's really interesting and, and to toot our, the horn of all the local producers. You need to compare, you think, oh, they're local, they're gonna be more money. Honestly, there's more than one occasion that local buying local is less expensive than buying it from Food Line or Martins or something else. And then on top of that, you're keeping the money local. And I know everybody and their brother said that, but it just, it, it's definitely worth repeating. You just have to be aware that there are always two sides to that coin. The harder you pinch it, the more you're gonna notice both of those sides, but there are two sides and if you're doing it to make money, please don't because you're, it's not steady, it's not reliable, and the only money you're gonna make into it is what you pay for with your time and your blood and your sweat and your tears. And I, I know how that sounds, and it sounds like a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. If it's not what you want to do, it doesn't matter how well you do it, you're not gonna make it because your heart's not in it. If you can't have heart, really seriously, just please reconsider something else because you have to you're part of it there those pigs are not just a thing to get rid of or i'm tired of it and i don't want it anymore um it's a full-time thing and you know it's it's full time you you can see back it, it's mud and it's dead and it's drab and it'll be great when everything is having babies and it's spring and flowers everywhere but this is the reality of it during the other time of the year and you have to be ready for both of it. Just be realistic in your goal. If you can be realistic and honest with yourself, everything else will follow through if you're honest with yourself. And it sure doesn't hurt, help to have a have a spouse that wants to do it with you. You know, we've had some serious knockdown drag outs over the farm. And <laughs> you know, we're both passionate about it, but I couldn't do it without her. Welcome to the West Virginia Department of Agriculture's Homesteading Series. In this series, WVDA planning coordinators collaborate with producers around the state to share the most up-to-date information on food prep, raising livestock, self-sufficient living skills, and much more for homesteading in the mountain state. Their goal is to help people of all skill levels increase their knowledge for sustainable living or expand their farm business. The business development staff work to grow West Virginia agribusinesses and economy. West Virginia has a vibrant ecosystem of communities, small farms, and innovative organizations that support the agricultural economy. Our team's goal is to reach out with tools and partnerships to make potential businesses aware of the services and support the West Virginia Department of Agriculture and its partners can provide. Additionally, the business development team oversees our West Virginia Grown and Veterans and Heroes to Agriculture programs. WVDA planning coordinators act as local liaisons, coordinators, and facilitators helping develop agriculture projects and assist agribusinesses around the state. They participate in economic and business development efforts while addressing food insecurities and building resiliency in local communities. West Virginia Grown is the state's premier branding program for agriculture products. The West Virginia Grown logo indicates to buyers the product was grown and or processed with quality ingredients in the Mountain State and that their dollars are going right back into their communities. We also offer marketing opportunities for West Virginia producers through our West Virginia Grown program. This program is free and members gain access to the West Virginia Grown brand logo for labeling use on any eligible products. If you become a member, you'll be included in our producer database, our West Virginia Grown directory, market bulletin, and social media platforms. The business development team also includes the Veterans and Heroes to Agriculture program staff. Their priority is to provide support to veterans, law enforcement, firefighters, and first responders transitioning into agriculture via education, scholarships, mentorship opportunities, marketing, technical and business development support, and navigating available resources. 
The program seeks to further promote the development of agricultural industries, products, and marketing opportunities across the state.